I just picked up the new Cymatics Origin Vintage Lo-Fi plugin. I've been messing around with it for the past half an hour and having a lot of fun. I think it's a really unique plugin, even compared to other plugins in the same category. It's a multi-effect that contains a saturation unit, tape wow and flutter, resampling, tape noise, and a chorus. It's also got a very simple layout. Honestly, I'm surprised that it's a freebie, but I'm also super appreciative because it's a great thing to add to the collection and the toolbox. I created a demo track to test out the plugin and give you more of an in-depth review and deep dive into the plugin. Testing out the different effects units, testing out the different modes, and seeing how the plugin works in a real production context. First things first, here's the user manual. It says, Origin is a vintage lo-fi effects plugin built around a real-time resampler and four effects modules, designed to create a realistic vintage effect with minimal effort. I think it does that pretty well. Resampler. The core of Origin is its resampler, which changes the sample rate of your running audio in real time. It leverages the Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem, which states that the highest possible frequency producible in the digital domain is one half of the sampling rate. This is just a way of saying that lowering the sample rate of digital audio will reduce the high frequencies that you can hear. However, reducing the sample rate alone will produce bit crusher style artifacts called images. In many cases, these can be desirable. Removing these images will result in an effect similar to a brick wall low pass filter, but with an altogether different sonic character. Rather than turning down the cutoff on a low pass filter to cut high frequencies, Origin mathematically forbids high frequencies from existing above the resampler cutoff frequency. This effect is the famous underwater effect you hear on a lot of melodies in Drake songs. Filters. Imaging artifacts produced by the resampling process can be removed with the post-resampler anti-aliasing filter. The presampler approximative filter removes high frequencies at the input stage before the resampler, reducing the imaging artifacts even further. The high-pass filter is a standard filter fixed at 200 Hz for removing unnecessary low-end frequencies. It'd be really nice to have control over the frequency for the low-cut filter, but it's just a cool thing to include in the first place, so I'm happy it's there. Saturation. Driving the inputs of vintage gear will generate non-linear saturation, coloring the sound, and giving a character. Origin has a selection of tube and drive saturation effects, which are positioned after the resampler in the signal path. Turning this up on a resample source can rescue some of the harmonics lost in the resampling process. Movement. The movement module emulates the subtle pitch wavering of old tape. There are two unique movement modes available in Origin which range from subtle to extreme pitch modulation. One thing I really like about this plugin is it gives you a random movement option. The random mode modulates the pitch of the signal in a random manner, similar to the effect produced by creases and deformities in analog tape. Increasing the amount of random pitch modulation will intensify its effect and also make it go slightly faster. The second movement type is based on a more traditional wow-flutter combination found in old reel-to-reel -reel decks. Increasing the amount for this type will intensify the effect of the slower wow modulation, bringing in the faster flutter modulation slowly past the 50% mark. I didn't even realize that until reading the manual, so I'm kind of glad I looked at the manual. Obviously, you can mess around with the knobs to get the desired effect just by listening to it. Noise. The noise module offers a wide array of noise sources from vintage equipment. You can click right here and get the drop-down menu for all the different options or use the left and right arrows. It can be positioned before or after the resampler via the switch under the knob. Positioning the noise source before the resampler can smear the cutoff point in a pleasant way. Chorus. The chorus in Origin is based on the classic Bucket Brigade chip found in the iconic Juno 60 synthesizer. The switch selects between the same two chorus rates as in the Juno 60. It will turn any dull, mono sound into a lush and vibrant kaleidoscope, as it has for decades. Set the resampling frequency halfway with all filters on and turn up the chorus. It should all make sense after that. I quickly want to talk about the installation and authorization of the plugin. The installation was completely painless. You just get the downloader, install the AU or VST, and go from there. It loads right up in your DAW. You don't have to connect to the internet. You don't need a license code, no signing up for anything. Always a huge plus in my opinion. Before I dive into using the Origin plugin on a mix, I want to discuss the one downside of this plugin in my opinion, and that's that it doesn't have an input or output gain trim control. Some of the effects, like the saturation and resampling, are going to change the overall loudness of the signal path that it's on, and it would be nice to have just a couple extra knobs down here for input and output gain. 
Maybe that's something they add in an update if they decide to continue to support this plugin. Cool, so that's it for the user manual. Let's dive right into using the Origin plugin on a mix. I just loaded up a fresh instance of Origin, so this is exactly what you're going to hear on the plugin when you first load it up, and I'm going to solo it on an electric piano. Cool, so now let's mess with some of the settings on the plugin and dial in a sound that we really like. Main knob here is the resampler. That's the underwater effect that they're describing. If you want more of a bit crush sound, you can turn off these filters. You can also turn on and off the low cut or high pass filter. For this electric piano, it could be nice to use this low cut feature to let the drums and the bass stand out. I'd probably prefer a little bit less noise, especially if you're going to be using multiple instances of this plugin on different tracks, keeping the noise really high. It's going to stack, and so you're going to have an extremely noisy track. So you can turn it down quite a bit. Another thing I forgot to mention, if you click right here, you can bump it up to a large UI size. I probably wouldn't use it this, this large, I would use the medium setting. Okay, now let's check out some of the different noise modes. So if you keep it here on the left, it's going to put the cassette noise before the resampler, and if you put it here, it's going to put it after the resampler, which gives you a lot of sonic variety. Super cool. I really like that reel-to-reel -reel sound. Nice subtle vinyl crackle. I wonder how long the loop is if they're using a noise loop. They give you a lot of options for the different noises. Some of them sound very similar, but they give you enough of a variety. Cool, so I'm going to turn the noise off and let's mess with the saturation. As you can hear, that's making the track louder, so I'd like to have something like an output game control. I think the left mode is the tube saturation and the right is the drive. I don't hear a huge difference between those two modes, but maybe on different sources it's a bit more apparent which one you're using. Either way it sounds good, it breaks up the signal very nice. Pretty cool that you could also
also use this main resampler knob as a filter to bring elements into a mix or cut them out. You could automate this, I'm sure. I'm going to leave it all the way up for now. And let's completely drive the saturation. drastically different. It's cool to give you two modes. I'd also like to mention that I really like the UI of this plugin. It looks like an old cassette deck or an old stereo system, which I think is really cool. They didn't go for the skeuomorphic knobs, which is the fake 3D look, and I think it works really well for this. They do have some, uh, some light shifting here on the knob, which is unnecessary but kind of cool. Overall, it looks great. It's got a very simple user interface. I think they could probably make some of the letters and words look a little larger. But if you hover over some of them here, like on saturation, it shows you the percentage you're using, which is nice. And as you turn the knob, it'll also show the number. And it does the same for the resampling knob. It gives you the number down here. I think they probably could have put the number right above each individual element, which might make it easier to just have both on screen at the same time so you know exactly what percentage you have if you're trying to duplicate your settings from one track to the other. Okay, everything's set to zero. Let's mess with the movement, which is tape wow and flutter. So this left mode must be the random wound flutter, and the right is fixed. And it mentioned in the user manual that when you pass 50% it starts to introduce flutter on one of the modes. It sounds pretty good though. Last year is the chorus, which they say they modeled after the Juno 60. The chorus is perfect for something like Rhodes. The right must be the fast chorus mode, and the left is slow. Each module in the plugin is very useful. I'm sure you can find even more uses for the plugin because they let you turn some of the modules completely off so you could use just the resampler, just the tape noise, just the tape wow and flutter. Now I'm going to create a sound that I think works really well for this electric piano. So we now know that this plugin sounds great on an individual element and has a lot of versatility, but how does it sound and work in the context of a full production, a full mix? I currently only have the plugin on the electric piano, and I have a bunch of other instruments here, but none of them have Origin on them. I'm going to play back the entire mix and go to each individual element and try to dial in a sound using Origin that works well with the production. Let's give that a shot.
really impressive plugin. I'm going to be using this on a lot of my projects and maybe going back to some old projects and replacing other tape emulation and bit crushing units with this to see if I can get a different sound. I like the fact that it has so many different things built into it and different options. I haven't experienced any bugs, crashing, or issues with it otherwise. The plugin also has a ton of factory presets built into it. If you're having trouble dialing in a sound that you like, you can try out one of these presets and then change the different modules here. It also gives you the option to save your patches. I'm going to go ahead and recommend that you pick this plugin up. I see no reason not to considering it's free and it sounds very good. Don't have to deal with any of that licensing or authorization BS, which is always nice. Give the Cymatics Origin plugin a shot. Try it out on some of your mixes. Might inspire you to make some uh, different genres of music or make certain sounds a bit more tasteful. Super cool plugin to have. I'm honestly surprised it's free. I'm glad Cymatics is giving it away. Maybe they're going to create a pro version of it with more options. As I said, my only gripe with the plugin is that it doesn't have input and output gain. With that, it would be amazing. It would replace a lot of other plugins. It's not a huge issue in my opinion, but it would be nice to have those things. Awesome. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you checking this video out and definitely go check out the Origin plugin. If you're interested in more plugin reviews like this, leave a comment, consider subscribing, and let me know. I'd really like to know. Thanks again.